In this video, let's take a quick look at the shadow box. What is shadow box and how can we use it to our advantage? So shadow box is great for extruding any kind of 2D shapes. And before we even extrude anything, let me actually show you what that is. So if I grab any shape, for example, here's the Dynamesh 64, and I head over to the geometry, and then go to shadow box, you will see the shadow box has a few options. You have the resolution options, and you have the polish options. So polish is obviously how smooth something is. So for example, the edges of your shapes. So if you um, wanted to play around with it, you can. If I set mine to maybe something like zero, right? And click shadow box, you will see that our sphere changed into some kind of a strange shadow box object. Now shadow box is really cool. And let me show you how it works before we even begin actually importing any shapes into it. Let's understand how it works. So this is what it did to our sphere. So everything in shadow box is based on unmasking. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is hold down control key and just clear my mask. When I clear my mask, that actually deleted the sphere and now I just have a empty shadow box. Now let's say I want to hold down control key and you can control the size of your masking while holding down the control key. So if you make it relatively small, you can maybe um, let's just drag like, like a letter, for example, A. Now, as soon as I started drawing my mask, you can see that it's actually trying to, I'm going to press X to turn off my symmetry. As soon as you let go, it actually creates the shape that you're drawing. So it's automatically kind of taking a flat mask and turning it into a 3D object, which is really awesome. And you can, this could be really powerful and you can use it to your advantage. Right now you can see the edges are kind of jaggedy and that's because our resolution is set so low. If we clear our mask, turn off shadow box and maybe pump this up all the way up, then turn this on. Okay, we're going to create a much higher resolution shadow box. So let's clear our mask. And look up here, you can see that it gave us 3 million points. Now that's a big jump. But now if we draw the same shape, you will see that the edges are going to be much different. It's much, much better shape. And to access the shape, all you got to do is just simply turn off shadow box and bam, you have your, your shape. Now we're in Dynamesh. If I switch this to something like 128, I can hold on control and drag and actually smooth this a little bit or turn it into 128 Dynamesh and then polish it. And now we have this really cool, amazing shape. Well, that's awesome. And you can obviously hand draw any shape you want. But what would be cool if you can actually bring something in, like from Photoshop, like a 2D uh, PNG file or something. So let's take a look and see how that works. So I'm going to jump into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually just going to create a blank document, 1024 by 1024 and I'm gonna create an alpha brush for ZBrush which we can use in our shadow box as well alright so here's the empty document next you can draw any shape you want or you can find any file you want on Google or any any really transparent PNG file in my case I'm just gonna use something from my previous tutorial that I use for my car and this is just a hand drawn um, skeleton that I drew in flash and just brought this into Photoshop as a PNG file alright so if I grab this and I'll give you this with this lesson as well so you can practice but if I grab this character or this uh, skull and drag it into my 1024 empty document I need to first scale this a little bit make sure it fits maybe even change the width just a little bit just kind of center it doesn't really matter but Something like that should work. Now to make an alpha brush, the only rule that we have is that the background must be black and the alpha that we're drawing has to be white. So right now this drawing has both black and white. So let's first get rid of all the black in, 
in this drawing. So I'm going to do that by going into levels and just take my black slider and just get rid of all that color. All right, so just flooding it pretty much white. Then I'm going to go to my background color and make sure that this is set to black. And go ahead and just paint it in. So I end up with something like this. All right, now I'm going to save this and maybe just throw it on my desktop as cartoon skull. Let's jump back into ZBrush. And now in ZBrush, what we need to do is go to our alpha and then say import. And on your desktop or wherever you put the file, grab that image. Okay, now you can see it, it show up right here. Next, let's go ahead and turn our shadow box back on. And I'm going to leave my resolution at 1024 and polish at zero because I really want the sharp edges. Okay, here's my shadow box. I'm going to go ahead and hold on control key and just clear my selection. So I end up with something like this. Next, I'm going to hold down control key and go to my alpha and select the skull that I just imported. I'm also going to holding down control key, grab my drag rectangular tool. I also want to change my shift, focal shift, to ne negative 100. I'm going to try this one more time. There we go, that's much better. Now, with the focal shift at minus 100, I get these really nice, clean shapes. Alright, now let's just turn off the shadow box, and we end up with this really cool extrusion of our 2D drawing. So we can even change it to white if we wanted to. Z and you know what this is not enough. Let's do a 512. Just a little more resolution. Holding on the control key I'm actually going to turn off my alpha and put this back to dots and then just holding on control key redynamesh. Okay, at 512 we get a much better uh, shape. Now we can of course smooth it. And we end up with something like this. Now every time you use the shadow box, all of your planes are going to get turned on. So make sure if you wanted to in the floor, just turn off the X and the Z right up here. And then leave, just leave the Y. And if we wanted to, we can go to draw change our grid, grid size and maybe do a quick BPR. So as you can see it's really useful and whenever you need maybe additional detail or you want to extrude any kind of shape um, this is a great way to do it. So I hope this was helpful.